Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and the love we have for the knitting community. And we do it with the twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. Hello, and I am Frugal Miss Penny, and in our birth order, I am the oldest. And we also have two other members on the Frivolous and Frugal team. We have Faithful Nikki, who is number three in the birth order, our cheerleader, our statistician, <laughs> our actuarialist, you know, all those things that every sister needs um, to have in her back pocket. And then the other member is our fearless Miss Brianna. She is the daughter of number seven. And trust me, when we say fearless, she is fearless. She will try and do anything, won't she? Yes, she will. She's amazing. Um, they're not with us today, but I wish you could see them. So keep tuning in, especially if this is the first time you've watched our podcast. We're so glad you're with us. Um, if you think about it, if you'll put in the comments below how you heard about us, we'd love to know. And we hope that when you finish this episode, you walk away with just a nugget of information and um, inspiration and humor and for those of you who are returning hello hello we're so glad you're back um we always enjoy knitting with you and like you we want all of you to get your favorite note-taking device your knitting and your sense of humor because we are about to embark on episode 94 of the frivolous and frugal podcast take it away don Okay, squirrel moment. You know how we say I'm the fourth child. We still refer to ourselves as children. And now we have to sit at the old people table. What's up? With I don't know. I guess maybe in our brains, we're always the kids, <laughs> yeah. the eight mom girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our family physician growing up told my mom she had eight mom girls. So not, not sure what that meant, but don't want to go there. Okay. Well, I choose to take it as a compliment. <laughs> I don't know how to take it. So. <laughs> 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 embrace it dawn embrace it embrace the pace there you go what lovely things are we wearing around our neck miss penny oh well i am hoping to keep this on the whole episode but if it comes flying out you'll know that i got a bit too warm and if my hair falls like it did at last episode you'll know that i was having a private su summer um <laughs> this is the beautiful row by row sampler cowl by our dear friend, Miss Irene from the Three Ply Podcast. Um, just a wonderful pattern, I think. Dawn and I both enjoyed knitting it. I knit mine using, um, uh, well, hang on here, just can't, Rowan DK Pure Wool, like that yarn. It's just a beautiful, soft gray. I knit it on size five needles. And of course, it was priceless when it comes to the pattern because Miss Irene gave it to us as a gift. And I also put the um, yarn on my frugalometer as a four. It's a bit pricey. Nevertheless, I do like knitting with it. So thank you, Miss Irene. You did a wonderful job. And I think it just might be the gift for all my daughter-in-laws for this next Christmas. What about you? What's around your neck? It looks familiar. <laughs> I'm wearing the same thing. And this is Rowan Soft Alpaca DK in the Blossoms colorway, a real pale pink, also on a US 5. Um, and you can just see the difference. Isn't it funny? They're both Rowan yarns, but different. And our gauge is probably just a tad different. Um, I did have enough extra in my second skein of this to do an extra repeat down here. So Irene says very easily on the pattern, you can follow it on um if you have extra yarn you can do some additional repeats um i have been loving wearing it i have another one too that i'll wear another time i just think what a great gift idea and the other thing the reason we're promoting this um is irene has decided that the amount of money she gets from the sales of this pattern she's going to donate for the um to defray the costs of our meetup in july so kudos to you everybody should pause this video right now and go over to Ravelry and buy one. Current price is $4.50. And Miss Irene, we can't thank you enough for being so gracious. And all of you ladies on the Three Ply Podcast, you are just such encouragers. And we're so glad you're not only in our fiber family, but now you're in our 
regular family too. So <laughs> thank you. Um, it was funny on their last podcast, she uh, threw Noel <laughs> <laughs> under the bus for saying she was the one who recommended Irene make this pattern. So that was good. Yes. Um, and knits and pieces, both Kelly and Noel have knit one as well. PJ knits, she's knit one. So watch their podcasts um, too, to see all the different, you know, Penny Kelly did a variegated, I think it was oh, a no. Malabrigo. It is stunning. You can see the design. You can see all the textured stitches in her variegated yarn. You can. And Noelle put a strand of mohair. All right. There has to be another one of these now with a strand of mohair. So. Yeah. Yeah. What's and a girl to do with only 15 things to wear with mohair? You need at least 16. <laughs> and if we remember, let's throw this in for the meetup. Oh, yes. I will do my best. And then frugalometer for me, um, I did say three dollars for the um fiber and one dollar for the pattern since um irene did gift it so yes very good and what is your miss opal wearing well opal is sporting the three color cashmere shawl by ho he locatelli and as you can see they're just bright fun poppy colors i knit that in leading men fiber arts um fingering weight yarn sock weight yarn in the colors moonlight starlit and the second one is blue ink and what a delightful knit the pattern was wonderful the yarn was very um tactily pleasing really enjoyed that knit that years ago um but looking at it today I don't think I would change the frugalometer from what I had originally I put four dollar signs on that fiber and I put two dollar signs on the um pattern and I knit that on the U.S. size six. You know, we talk often about new knitters. I, we just both have a heartbeat to help new knitters. That was my very first shawl, the three color cashmere. So if you're looking for um, simple stitches, easy to read increases with just a tad bit of lace there at the bottom, mm -hmm. I think that or her three color cashmere cowl are both great patterns for people who are either maybe getting back into knitting because you've been out for a while right. or you're just looking for a, a beautiful crescent. Um, yeah, that is funny. That is, I think that was the very first shawl I ever did. And I think her patterns are well-written, especially for the new beginner. You and I did not struggle with it at all that I can remember. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I've not knit any of her garment patterns, but um, I would say definitely for her shawls, they are very well written. And what a great way to use um, pops of color, too. Well, speaking of pops of color, what's over your shoulder well, on Ruby? This is actually off my needles, too, but this is Airplane Mode by Elizabeth Smith. It is a triangle shaped shawl. Let me see if I can pull it off. It is using Barocco Dash. She wrote the pattern for Barocco, I believe. So you can see that this is a yarn that has just the flashes of color. And it is a perfect pattern for yarn such as that. I don't know if you can see the border. I thought the border was kind of pretty. Oh, yeah. No, I, I like it. It's big, right? Oof. I didn't measure it, but it's got to go 90 inches, if not a little bit more. When you see the pattern that um, it was originally written for, she calls it a shawlette. She used two skeins of this Barocco dash. She did one skein in a colorway up top and then changed the colorway for the bottom half. I kept the same colorway, which by the by the way, I think is called sugar loaf. Um, also <laughs> a shawlette, right? It doesn't work for me. So right. I went ahead and bought four skeins and I just knit until... I had about 30, I think 30 grams left or so to do the, the border. And she says in the pattern to go to her website for ways to make it larger. So that's what I did. Again, I appreciate that about a designer if they're willing to share that. It is written on a, or it is written. Um, it is knit with a US size 13. Okay, so I started with a 40 inch and had to, and I ordered a 60 inch. And I would have ordered a larger one if there was such a way. I know I could take an interchangeable set and make those cords longer, but um, it got big and fairly heavy because this is a bulky yarn. I wondered, I was going to ask you if it was heavy because I haven't seen that one in person. No, and it's got a nice, and I really, really pulled out that buffalo hump. Yes, you did. And Look at it. I like it. Yeah. 
Several people sent me videos to watch. Suzanne Bryan has a YouTube video on a way that she has modified the garter tab cast on to avoid the bump. Really? So I just saved it as a favorite. So the next time I do a shawl that has a garter tab start, I'm going to try it. And she does oh. a really nice job showing you close up what the what it looks like if you do it as written versus what her modification looks like. And again, I do appreciate that as well. I do too. Um, now, I don't know if I'll wear it much. Don't you don't know. think you'll wear it in the colder months? I don't know. Maybe, maybe transitional. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of- wear it like a schlanket? Yeah, that's probably what it would be, more like a schlanket. Um, I easily could see it draped over my chair to put on if I'm sitting in the chair and I'm cold. Okay. So um, it was a fun day. Now, like four of us, five of us did it together here in Green Bay. So that was probably the fun of it for me is that we all ordered the yarn and um, did it. As far as the frugalometer goes, um, I would call it $4 signs for the yarn. Again, the pattern calls for two. I bought four and I called the um, pattern $2 signs. It currently is for sale on Ravelry for $5. So, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do you yeah. ever just knit something and you're done with it? And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I wear it a couple of times and like it, that'll change. So, well, yeah. And I think our tastes change over time too. Yeah. If you like it, you can have it for Christmas. Oh, really? Uh, let me try it on. I don't know when I'll be able to wear it. <laughs> I, I would have to be in an Arctica to wear it. So that would have to come with a trip to Antarctica. Okay. okay. On second thought, you're done. <laughs> All right. So what are you currently working on? What's on your needle? Well, you know, I'm a monogamous kind of gal and I'm still monogamous. I am continuing to work on the very look easy. At look at this. I know it is the very easy lace shawl by Lily Chin and it's actually called Charlotte's Easy Shawl. So you can see where my lace is kind of crunched up. I am knitting it in Jagger Spun Zephyr Silk Wool in the Mushroom Colorway. And it is on a size six. And I'm using wood needles to keep this weight from slipping all around and slipping off the end. On the Frugalometer, <laughs> it gets $5 signs for this lace weight yarn. <laughs> five dollar signs for stress right? so you know and then three dollar signs for the pattern it is selling currently for 6.95 on Ravelry now this was a UFO from 2004 I know I didn't pay 6.95 for that pattern but it is so old it was still printed on cardstock with a photograph <laughs> I'll just take you all back that way. Um, and I have no idea how or when to stop knitting it because I would have to put this on, try it on cord and steam it or mist it and really block it to see how big it is. So I think I'm just going to knit one skein. I have another skein. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, I might have to just keep it in case I need to get out of jail and tell them I've got very expensive yarn. Will this work for bail? Um, but anyway, yeah, that's what I'm working on. And hopefully I can finish it by May. And if not, I'll finish it when I finish it. Um, <laughs> five on the stress meter. That'll be our next thing we have to do. Well, we could have a, yeah, we could have a stress on stressometer and that could tell because, um, there's absolutely nothing petite about me. And so when you're working, <laughs> what I'm trying to drink. From <laughs> well, well, some things don't need to be stated because they're obvious. However, um, and then I'm working with this cobweb type lace yarn and I can't, oh, anyway, I'm, I'm embracing it. I'm learning. I've, I've learned a couple things from it. So whatever it is. And that's an overused word too, by the way, embrace. So I apologize for that. But anyway, I'm making it work. Embrace works for a dating technique. How's that? 
<laughs> you are far more experienced in that area than well, I am. Yeah, like I would know any dating techniques. Okay. So anyway, this, this conversation is going bad fast. It is. Okay. So what are you working on? Um, oh, I'm at that point where this needs to be done. Look at my Celtic blanket. <laughs> it is together. Let's see if I, I can know. Get it. So one, a good friend of mine gave me a goal for the year to finish this up. So let's see if I can do it. You have to ignore all the little, oh, look at a strand of mohair just happens to be hanging out. I think you would tack those on garments just as decoration. Mohair dangles. There you go. So nine squares. This was a knit along that started in September a year and a half ago. Wow. So it's alternating the light and the dark. So um, beautiful. Now I I just warred with how to attach these squares. So I watched oodles of videos. The pattern calls for an I cord, no, not an I cord, three needle bind off. And in my head, I thought the ridge of the three needle bind off was going to be on the outside. And I did not want that at all. So I avoided it for a long time until you, it's amazing what happens when you read the pattern. <laughs> um, the three needle I cord is on the inside. So I thought that became a really nice join. I think so too. I'm glad you stuck with it. Now, let's see if I can come up a little closer. Oh, please. The border called for an I-cord border. I didn't want that either. So I went on to Ravelry and I found this cabled border pattern. You actually purchased it on Etsy. And what I liked about it is she showed you how to do the corners too, how to round a corner. Woo, I like that. I think it sets the blanket off. I do I too. Like I like it, it now. I'm hoping when I steam it, you see it's got a little ridge here. I'm hoping that that just kind of smooths out a little bit. So I am around three sides and I was hoping to get this done by today. I'll show you what I have left. I have this much left. That's it. So I'm not so sure I will show it again actually when it's done, um, but I will take some pictures. and. I like it. So thank you for the challenge. Oh, don't you love that cable? Oh, I mean, I think of cables. I, I think of that one. Yep. Wow. I like it. Celtic. So let me tell you a little bit about the pattern because it's been a while since I started it. Um, it is the Celtic Quilt 4 by Louise O'Neill. It was a mystery knit along. And so once a month for nine months, we got the pattern released. Several of us here in Green Bay did it. Actually, that's when I was still doing the Tuesday night Zooms. And quite a few people did it and quite a few are done <laughs> on time. The yarn I'm using is Plymouth Yarn Encore Worsted Solids in the light gray and the medium gray colorways. I knit it with the sizes recommended on the pattern, which is a US 7 and a US 8. For the frugalometer, I gave a dollar sign, one dollar sign for the fiber, and two dollar signs for the pattern. If you were to go by the pattern today, obviously it's completed. Um, it is twelve dollars, and um, I think it's just a good deal. Now, I think these were seventeen inch squares. All of her previous patterns for her annual knit along are seventeen inch squares, so you could go back and add and make this as big as you want. I've seen some people on Ravelry just took each one and made it a throw pillow. Oh, I like I that, that idea. I like that idea too. Um, but yeah, I guess I am, I wasn't super excited to finish it because I didn't know how I wanted it finished, but I am very happy with the join. So, and well, did I give the frugalometer on that? I think you I did. did. And you know what? Let's see if I can show you how much yarn I have left. This is the final ball. So I'll have a little bit left of this. Yeah, and I had 22 grams left of the light gray. So the pattern, I thought, did a nice job with the anticipation of how much yarn you needed. So, yeah. And you must have been right on gauge then. Yeah, and will this be enough maybe to do a little charity hat or something? Oh, I bet. Um, yeah. Or you could always stripe it with another encore. Good point. Good point. And I think I have a few other colors, maybe of, it's one of those workhorse yarns. Um, I said that the other day and um, Steve wanted to know what workhorse meant. 
And I said, it's just one of those yarns that are very versatile, um, can be used a lot of different ways, but also as the care for it is very easy as it's machine wash, machine dry. So I like it for baby knits, for charity knits, um, or to, for people who just really don't want a, a hassle with hand washing. I agree. Yeah, very good. Uh, so you're monogamous, so I guess I go next again, don't yeah. I? Keep going. Um, I just have, believe it or not, not much left on my needles during finish it February. So <clears throat> look at this. Ooh, talk about mohair. <laughs> so let me see. This is an interesting pattern. I saw a gal talk about this pattern on a podcast. And she said the designer did not have the pattern available on Ravelry, but she had it on her Instagram. So I went to her Instagram and she is from Finland and she um, does a Finnish Instagram post. <laughs> so she tried a translation in English and it was funny. She said she did it using her phone. So I assume something like Google Translate. So this is going to be about as close as I can get um, by her recommendations. Um, it is called the I'm So Mohair Beanie, and it's actually just hashtag that, hashtag I'm So Mohair Beanie on Instagram. You use four strands of mohair. <laughs> is that not fun? So I'm using Katia Concept Mohair. They do the 50 mohair shades. Um, if you ever see it, it's a fun display where they have all 50 colors of their mohair. And here is how this yarn comes in these little spools, 20 grams. Uh -huh. And I'm using four different colorways and it just comes with a, a little, a little spool. So I did post the actual colorway numbers in my Ravelry. Now, here's how I'm keeping it. You'll be so proud of me. Little Ziploc bags. Look at oh, that. come on. Remember my little button trick? I do. So I saw Penny and Nikki and Brianna and I were all together this past weekend. It was an incredible weekend. And I was doing this holding all four strands coming through this button with four holes. Now the yarn wasn't getting tangled, but the strands or the hairy little projectiles of the mohair kept getting caught. So either Penny or Brianna said, why don't you just put two buttons and use two strands coming through one and two strands coming through another. So that's what I did. I grabbed a smaller one. That has really stopped that whole thing from happening. Now, when you're knitting it, it's funny because the buttons clink. <laughs> so it says on the pattern again, because it's it's basically free, you go 40 centimeters. So I had to ask Alexa what 40 centimeters was, and she told me 15 inches. <laughs> and then if I can read the pattern and the interpretation correct. You don't decrease evenly around. You just decrease on the two sides. Oh, really? Up, yeah. So I don't, I'm just a little over halfway. So this will be one of those um, hats that you do this to. Not only do you fold it once over, you fold it twice over. Oh, it's so even it's now you can warm. see I'm not past the brim. So, and I think I'll have plenty of yarn, so um and i'm knitting it on a u.s size five the pattern is a size one what i may do and i don't know how this would work i should put in my ravelry notes um how i do the decreases so that if i want to do the hat again i would know I how to do that would be nice it'll also give you ideas for design so if you don't like the way it looks you can modify decreases if you do it again yeah yeah right so if um, you like the idea of four or six ridges you can just adjust from there or you could use another hat that you really like the decreases yeah and mimic that this weighs absolutely next to nothing okay so now frugalometer for yarn <clears throat> do we need to add no, it's priceless because it's mohair. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was priceless. Um, I'm throwing four, a foul on that. <laughs> four strands of mohair, depending on which mohair you pick. Now, um, 20 grams, which is an interesting number, right? Because it seems like most yarns come 25 or 50. Um, 
this mohair we were discovering last night on knitting with the aunties I, can't, I said, I can't believe how soft it is. It must be the silk I like. And I look at the label. There's no silk in here. So most kid silk haze, or I think a kid silk haze, I always think of mohair having a silk component, but this one does not. It is 67% mohair, 30% polyamide, 3% wool, um, 218 yards in each spool. I'm gonna have to go four dollars on the frugalometer. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'd love to try it like in knit picks aloft. Sure. So, um, a little more budget friendly. If you have a lot of mohair, like from Rowan, that'd be a little bit higher on my frugalometer. But yeah, and yeah, I should figure that out per gram. Maybe it's not higher. I don't know. Well, do you like working with it? Is it comparable? I do. I like it. Four different shades of gray. Go figure. <laughs> mm -hmm. They have a metallic mohair that has a little metallic string in it. So I may have to try that. Or I'm thinking this may be a great stash buster for all the extra mohairs I have. Oh, absolutely. Okay, like, like I love the color, the, co the color shift by Karina Spencer. This may yeah. be a go-to for ongoing mohair leftovers. Gosh, Don, that's a great frugal idea. I can't give you a price on the pattern because it really isn't a pattern, but I'll Penny will I'll Penny include the hashtag okay. on the show notes. And that way, if you want to watch that hashtag on Instagram, you can do that. I think she's done one. This is a one by one rib. She just created one that's a two by two rib. All right. Oh. And you have all that information yep, in it's your on. Yep, it is. Okay. All, All right. right. Um, the last thing I have on my needles, can you believe that? Only three things on my needles. <laughs> this is our current knit along that we're doing with fellow podcasters, the Burra Cowl. It is a pattern by Marie Wallen. It is a tube shaped cowl. Dawn. Um, that there. is beautiful. I am using, I'm doing it as the pattern directed as far as the colors and the yarn and everything. I am halfway. So. If I'm thinking halfway for a cowl, I bet I might want more than just two more repeats. So I did weigh all of my skeins at the halfway mark. I have plenty. So I definitely will get all four repeats, probably five. And I may have to get a little creative if I want the sixth one. But um, I'll just keep trying it on as I go. Now, the other thing I'll tell you is Jameson and Smith Spindrift. It's a, it's a rustic wool, crunchy, you'll hear people say. It's fingering weight. But every time I get ready to make it podcast pretty before we podcast, I steam it. It is so much softer down here because this has been steamed multiple times now. So if you were to feel the fabric here and feel it here, it is different. So I am hopeful that this will get softer um, with wear and with time and with washings. Yes. Interesting point. So it goes back to something we've talked about on and off over the years. Um, you really don't know what you have until you go through the blocking process, right? And then I just use my stitch markers to tell me each repeat. Uh huh. Boy, watch Very the hashtag. Beautiful. Hashtag Burra Cowl 2023. A lot of the podcasters have their own hashtags as well. Um, it's fun to see the color sequences. And the different yarns that are used. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Now, feel free to, I think there's um, six or seven podcasters. Every one has um, contests going on. So feel free to join all of them. And for anybody who joins us at the meetup, if you want to bring your burrow in any state of completion, it can still be on the needles. It can still be in a bag waiting to get casted on. We don't care. Um, it's just a good challenge for all of us to get a little bit better with our color work. And uh, Marie Wallen is probably a great person to follow for that. She's brilliant in her color work design. Um, the last details on this one, I'm using a U.S. size three. On the frugalometer, I gave $3 signs for the fiber. I think there are 10 or 11 colors in it. And then I gave $2 signs for the pattern. It is currently on sale on Ravelry for $5.17. So Not I'm just going to keep going. So I'm trying to do four rows a day. Not every day do I get four rows, but um, it's just a nice way for me to develop some muscle memory for um, color work. So I'm enjoying the process. 
That is all that is on my needles right now. So what about you? What's off your needles? Well, I have but one item. That is all. And it is the Muscle Burra hat. Um, I used the same yarn for this as, and I have not blocked it yet. I still have to tuck in my one end. Um, it is a pattern by Ysolde Tig. It is knit in Valley Yarns Deerfield in the frost gray colorway. It is going to be the companion to the Lamberhurst scarf that I knit for my son. So this hat was knit um, using her chart for gauge. I knit this hat on a US size six and I give it $4 signs for the fiber and $3 signs for the pattern. The pattern is currently $7.56 in American dollars. You used a US six. Yep, and had six and a half stitches per inch. That was my gauge. So I followed that pattern. I used a three. Yeah, I um I don't know why. I'm a, a tight three. knitter. I don't know. But anyway, um, I will be doing at least six of those hats because that's what I'm using to companion as a companion to the scarves that I'm knitting for um, Mike and the boys. So I will be playing, I'm sure, with different fibers and different needle sizes. Gosh, we need to do one with mohair. Mm. No, <laughs> you can. No, let me take that back. I retract that. Yes, you can do one with mohair. <laughs> I do not like all the little fibers that land on my glasses, on my lips, up my nose and in my ears and all over my clothes. Your ears. I'm um, sure they land in there because they tickle when I'm around mohair. I'll tell you four strands. It is for sure. And then I have a black wool winter coat and that is just a mohair magnet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But you know what? In all honesty, if the, if my daughter-in-law is like that hat and they want mohair, I would knit it for them. I just, oh, yeah. Some beautiful. You've seen the self-striping ones. The Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fun hat patterns out right now. Um, that is yeah. one for sure. All right. You know, according to our uh, show notes, you have a lot more finished objects, by the way. Uh, but that's not at, well, maybe, but I don't have them with me. Oh, okay. I've already given them away. So, and you didn't take pictures. I was going to say, and you took pictures okay. for your Ravelry page. Okay. Yeah, if I took pictures, my sons would have photo albums as babies. <laughs> they don't. They have to go to their friend's house to see what they look like when they were toddlers. And that's the truth. <laughs> All right, guess what else is off your off needles? the needles. Here it is. Woo! Yay! Hey, by Melanie Berg is done. Now you can see it's blocked. I have not tucked in the little strands. It is mohair. Oh, yes, can you see the is. little white strands of the white silk in there? So it's two stranded. The pink changing colors is the mohair. And then there's a, a lace weight strand. And then you can see where the pattern changed. I like that. Look at that. Oof. Beautiful. Oh, it is scrumptious. Now, a uh, pattern by Melanie Berg. It is um, one of the things I'd hoped to be off my needles at the end of the year and didn't make it. This is for Penny's, what I thought was for Penny's son's wedding in May, but I'm afraid that mohair may be a little hot for me. So I have no idea how I'm going to wear it, but look at that. Ooh, look it. Yeah, maybe like this. That's a good color for you, Dawn. Yeah. Wow. 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 It is beautiful. I hope the hotel is cold and we can wear it in the lobby. Absolutely. There we go. How's that? Now, you, you can't see, can you see the sparkle? You can't see the sparkle at all. Not real well. We can see the contrast in color, but I can't see the sparkle. The white lace has little baby sequins in it. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm admiring myself, which is a little vain. Um, <laughs> it's a beautiful garment. Um, I, I mimicked or mirrored um, a gal in the Thursday night Zooms. Woo did it all in white for her granddaughter's wedding. And that little bit of silk with the sequins in it is, I think under the right lights would be stunning. Um, so the yarn is Rowan Kid Silk Haze Color. 
and it is the lily colorway. So one I ran out of yarn, so I had to purchase the final skein to finish this. Um, and I used the Lano Gato, I think it's Lana, Lana Gato Palettes in the Ecru colorway. And I know it says Ecru, but it is snow white when you see it. It's knit on a US3. I called the pattern $3 signs on the frugalometer, and I called the yarn four. Currently for sale on Ravelry for $9.96. Um, this was designed initially for Shibui using Shibui yarns. Now, Penny, when I blocked this, that water was solid pink. And I mean solid. So initially, you know, you kind of freak out, drain it, had a color catcher in it. I should have took a picture of it. It was solid pink. And yet I rinsed it clear and not a drop of that pink went into that white. So both colors must have been saturated. Yep. Wow. That, that little palpitation one. I, I think I would have too. My stomach would have just flipped. I wish you could see the sparkle. Okay. Oh, well, we'll see it in May. All right. So that is off the hooks. Yay. Off the Congratulations. Hooks. We've watched that. Yeah. Grow. It is pretty light, but man, it's mo. Well, it's mohair. Um, we'll see if it works for the wedding. If not, we'll find something that does. Absolutely. Um, do you have anything else to share off your needles? Okay, I'll just keep going then. Yep. Um, I did the monthly dishcloth by the Kitchen Sink Shop. That's a free pattern that comes out the first of every month. And is that not cute? Yes, absolutely cute. For February. It's made off of sweets this year. And this is called the Linzer, which is that little white cookie that usually has jam in the middle, a red jam. So, and she, she includes the pattern as well as the recipe. Um, it is knit in Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton and it's the pink colorway. I just have a lot of uh, cotton scraps that I'm using up. Well, that's um, a good idea. Knit on a US 3. So interesting, the last one we used a US 5. So I went with the 3 and had to be pretty aggressive in the block. You kind of see it's a little distorted. <laughs> Uh, give it a $1 sign for the fiber and $1 sign for the pattern because it is currently free. I think if you go to the kitchen um, shop, kitchen sink shops website, sign up for the newsletter, you will get this. And then about a month later, it does show up on Ravelry. I did not check though to see if the patterns remain free on Ravelry. Okay. I don't believe they do. Okay. So um, I'm going to have to start including that, I guess, once we know the price. So I may save these for gifts, I think, all these little dishcloths. That's a good idea. Um, I like it. All right. Now, this is a Kofo, right? I don't think you've seen this one at all. So cast it on and finished. Uh-oh, it is spectacular. Oh, woo! Look what at it. Oh, what is that, Dawn? Let's see if I can do it this way and you can see the mohair. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so this is the Cargill cowl. It is by Rebecca Clow. I think her podcast is called the Crea Bea podcast. She is a knitter from Edinburgh. And it is the dip stitch, the pattern that you see there. <laughs> I it like it. Now, this yarn you, is just amazing because, first of all, it was a gift. The mohair is by Magpie Fibers, and it is in the greatest name ever. It's called Bougie Beaver. <laughs> it was a gift from James and Amy and Miss Carol when they went to Maryland Sheep and Wool last year and went to the Magpie. Um, oh, I like yeah. it. The, the base yarn is an ivory. All I can tell you, it has no, I didn't have a label. It was in my scrap bin. If I had to guess, it feels like Cascade Heritage Silk. But that's a total guess on my part. Um, I used a US 3 and a US 6 as the pattern um, calls for. So on the frugalometer for, if I had to buy the mohair, it'd probably go um, probably higher than what I have. Oh, I have $4 signs for the fiber. That's probably correct. And then $3 for the pattern, which is currently on sale for $3.80. She's giving the first 
so many patterns sold to a charity that does fistulas for women in third world countries who have complications following childbirth. Oh, yeah. So a very good cause. And you just yeah. knit this. It's, um, I knit it according to pattern. I had a little bit of yarn left. So maybe I could have done a couple more rows of the dip stitch. She has the Cardgill sweater. You know what? I'd say this color is not me, but oh, I don't know. I like it. Brio. I wouldn't say it's not you. I think you can pull it off. What is it? Okay. I like it. <laughs> All right. So again, that is the Cardgill call by Rebecca Clow. Very nice. Oh, Re Re oh, Brianna really liked it. So I may have to give that to her. Oh, I didn't realize she liked it. You know, I have some of that extra pink yarn from, or that pink mohair I may have to use. Mm, I don't know if she's a pink girl though. She no. would like that better. I know, I'd give her that one and I'd do a pink one for me. But oh, I don't okay. know, Bougie Beaver, is that not brilliant for a name? It is. Um, so it's, it's rose gold if you wanted to be more <laughs> classic. <laughs> Now I did do just a quick little charity. I'm gonna to try to do a charity project a month. This is that pattern by Tin Can Knits called the World's Simplest Mittens. This yarn was in my stash. I have no clue what it is. If I had to guess, it feels sport weight, maybe DK. I did the second size in the pattern, which it says is child. I followed the pattern as written. I think they're kind of cute. I do too. I like um, them. I may have enough left over to do a, a hat, but it wouldn't be able to be like a slouchy or anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a simple bank head would work. So, I like that. I like the idea of it. I did follow the pattern as written. So I used a US size three. I would say a dollar for fiber because I have no clue. Oh, it okay. does feel... Like it's got some acrylic in it. So I'm hoping it's machine wash, machine dry. Well, try yeah. it before you give it away. I should, I will. And it's a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. So, and it goes from infant all the way through large adult. So it's a great pattern. If you're a new um, mitten knitter, this is a great pattern for that. So. Well, and I think you gave us a great reminder to not forget about charities while we're knitting and enjoying yeah. our our art it's always important to remember charities and i'm thinking everybody i would guess would have a local need as well as there's many national needs and worldwide needs sure. so um i'm hoping there's a gal in our group who how this kind of started there's a gal in our group who teaches seven and eight year olds and she said she has students in her school or in her class that do not have mittens yeah. all right i'm on it okay yep so and I'm sure that that's one of millions of stories we could hear. Yep, so. I would agree. Um, all right. My whole look, my first cowl continues. <laughs> Yay! Yes, Yay. I like this one. Here's my latest little design attempt. So it um, is knit with Rowan. Do I love this yarn? Rowan <laughs> Soft Alpaca DK knit in true black and true white. It is a slip stitch pattern. Now I ran out of the white. So I knit till I was done with the white and then I had a little bit of black left because of the white that you used up here. So I don't know. What do you think about the top and the bottom being different colors? I don't, I think that's fine. I think, I think it's fine. Both the same, maybe if I had enough yarn, not sure. Well, maybe you could use it. You could style it differently. Well, and you know what? How I tend to wear most of my cows is I flip them now like this and wear them. So if I want black out, I can wear it this way. Correct. I want white out. So now in uh, the spirit of transparency, this is a pattern in a Michelle Hunter pattern that I knit a uh, class I taught a class on the color matic cowl that she has in her um favorites of knit pearl hunter it's in the book but it's also an individual pattern so i i've emailed her asking if i can use this pattern and if if we ever go to design with this and i i've not heard back from her so if i don't then i will contact Giselle because she uh i know michelle hunter is retired but i think she knit for Giselle if i'm right I believe she did work with Cassell. Could you not see this in like oodles of different colors? I know. 
Good. Mosaic Thank slip stitch. For new. Oh, and you can see there's a good example of the start and stop of the rows. Oh, yeah. Which I think it would be great for team colors. People like team color cowls. Oh, yeah. That would be great. Mm -hmm. That'd be a fun Christmas one, too, if I did with white with some green and gold or green and red. Mm -hmm. All right. Finish it February. Look at the stuff coming right off my. I head. know. All right. Keep last one. Oh, no. You know what? I forgot this one. <clears throat> Speaking of bank head hat. Look at that Look little at you. one. Another charity knit. So the mittens were my charity knit for January. This is my charity knit for February. I love this pattern. I've done many hats. It is the Bank Head by Susie Gorley. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Twisted rib. And then this is, I think, a five by one or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it goes in all kinds of sizes. This was the... Um, This might be the second to the smallest. So I don't oh, know the child? Or, yeah, child. Um, I was given this yarn. It is a yarn that's, I believe, no longer in production. It's Plymouth Yarn Coffee Beans in mm -hmm. the slate blue colorway. Now, I think I have enough that I can do the mittens. Oh, that yeah. would be a cute little combo. When I saw this, I thought, oh, this is too small. This would never fit like a kindergartner. But when I put it on the head, I think it would now that I see that. Don't you? Yeah, yeah I do too. Go Curly ahead and make yarn. the mittens. Pardon? I was going to say, go ahead and make the mittens because you just throw it in the wash. Yeah. I thought it was cute. Um, on a US size seven, I put a dollar for the fiber, and again, it was gifted to me, um, but also the a one dollar sign for the pattern because it still is currently free. And I think in my Ravelry uh, live or my Ravelry projects, this is the eighth or ninth bank head that I've done. Wow. So, um, yeah. So that's currently. And then the last thing, which I think I don't know if I had started last time we podcasted. Um, several of us here in Green Bay. Did a little workshop on felted slippers. Oh, look. So Dawn. this is, I know, aren't they? But this is the basic slippers by Arne and Carlos. Um, and <clears throat> a, a couple of things that I learned from this class. First of all, I'm using Heritage um, Two Ply by Briggs and Little. We had bought some of that yarn a couple of years ago when Jen helped us with the Icelandic mittens. Mm-hmm. So you pick your colors. They have a few suggestions, but the gal who taught the class, Marsha, has done a hundred pair. And she basically is, don't overthink this. Just have fun. Oh so I started God. with two colors because I wanted to learn an interesting concept. So, you know, when I did my previous felted slippers, I held two strands of worsted weight wool together. And this is two strands, but they're not held together. You do it like color work. Oh, really? So one stitch with one strand, the next stitch with the next, and then you alternate. And when you watch the Arnie and Carlos um, video, they say that when you do it that way, it makes a, a firmer fabric that doesn't stretch as easily. So the reason I started in this checkered because I wanted to get that in my head, what it meant to change every stitch. So it feels as thick as holding two strands, but it's more intertwined. Wow. So then <clears throat> once I got through the heel, I decided to go solid colors because I thought I understood that. I was in the class and the gal next to me, Miss Cindy said, well, Dawn, just go onto your phone and do a stripe generator. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, go into Google and type stripe pattern generator. So I did. Lots of them come up. I'll link one of them in the show notes. You tell it how many colors you're working with and how many rows. And then you pick what you want the sequence of stripes to be. Not necessarily the sequence, but you want some that are two rows, some that are four rows, some that are, and it goes from one row, I think all the way up to 24. So I said three colors. This was 36 rows from the start of the solids till the toe decreases. And I said twos, fours, or eights. And then you just keep hitting generate till you like a sequence that you like. So I took a picture of it and um, did it. 
I like it. Oh my gosh. Now, the last thing before I um, talk you to death on these, um, knit on a US nine. No, I love Arnie and Carlos, as you know. Mm -hmm. They're like somewhere between an eight and a 10. <laughs> right, nine seemed right smack dab in the middle. They were it like sure 10 if you're a tight knitter, eight if you're a loose knitter. Briggs and Little Heritage did not felt well. So our teacher said, just throw these in your normal laundry. So I did, you know, jeans, whatever, threw them in. Eight times I had to run it through a full wash cycle. And she said cold water because felting really only needs agitation. It doesn't need heat. Well, after four, you couldn't tell. There was no felting done whatsoever. So those clothes were really clean by that point. <laughs> I went to my, my husband doesn't know this I went to his um, I went to his dresser and grabbed some old jeans threw a couple pair of old jeans in and I started increasing the heat so I went to warm and that still didn't felt much so for the last three cycles I upped my uh, wash machine to super duty or heavy duty yeah um, and I went to hot water and it wasn't about the seventh one it started to felt and then the eighth besides I like it so now, I do have a top-loading, non-agitating. I don't have the center agitator. But other people in class were doing it cold water, two cycles, it was done. So I'm thinking, what is up? So I started watching people felting with heritage from Briggs and Little. It seems like it may be a Briggs and Little that people are having uh, needing more agitation and longer periods of time to get it to felt. So I'm going to leave it at that. And instead of doing eight washing cycles, next time I may buy a little portable agitating wash machine aren't they cute so that should change on the frugalometer we need to add a couple dollar signs because those are going to be the most expensive slippers you have ever knit and man are they clean okay yeah i guess so, so um i use the colors of briggs and little um bleached white dark gray and red and on a us9 I have to go in and trim my little, I didn't trim the, mm. I don't know if I have very many ends to weave in or not weave in, but trim. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to these. Now Steve wants a pair. So I'm thinking maybe if I have some Packer colors. Yeah. I would do that. I would like that. Although these are his school colors where he works. Oh. Yeah. Maybe if he stretches them, they would fit him. Now, could I make this a little longer, maybe? I'd like it to go up just a little bit higher on my ankle. I bet you could. I don't know why. Yeah, I think it is. The pattern is, he. they give you patterns for Fair Isle, if you want. Um, yeah. Wow. If you're interested, I could uh, send somebody the link to my friend who's done 100 pair. Her favorite yarn to use is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool or Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Really? She says, she those just... both felt very, very easily. Well, I just, that's good uh, to know. I don't have either of those in my stash right now. So very nice. Yeah, so that is what is off my needles. So what are you learning through all of this? Well, mine is keep the pace when you knit lace. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> I have just decided that. For me and my brain, I need to be monogamous when I'm in lace because I can I can develop a rhythm. And that's what I've been doing. And the shawl is growing. So I'm just keeping my eye on that and persevering until this is finished. Do you have your plan for what's next? Oh, to knit? Yeah. Yes. I have to frog my son's arm armors and re-knit those. Mike would like, um, my husband would like me to knit him a little something. And I will share that with everybody. We're going to try it. Um, and then I have to be about my Christmas knitting. So, it's and the way I'm doing my Christmas knitting, I had a great plan. You know, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Um, <laughs> I had a plan for doing my um, Christmas knitting, and it has been totally waylaid by this shawl for the wedding and I will try to resume what I was planning on doing so that's what I think I'll do yeah what are you learning 
Um, a couple of things. One is um, there's maybe four or five, well, more than that. We've set aside a day a week now for my group that meets in Green Bay to call, and we're calling it Finish It February. And so I think many of us just had these lingering projects on our needles or projects that needed a little bit of fixing or repair. Maybe you cast it on too tight or whatever. And so um, I know Finish It February is not new to the knitting world, but for some reason this year, it has really grabbed me. And um, I am glad that my needles will be pretty clear once I get these um, this blanket done. So that means everything on my needles is new from this year. So I just like the fact that I'm not monogamous, but I had eight things on the needles. Uh -huh. That is just a hard thing to wrap your head around. Um, because even though I try to knit a little bit every day on most of them, if I had time, I've, I've kind of come out of retirement and gone back to work a few days a week. And um, that's cramping my style a little bit as far <laughs> as my knitting time. So um, I, I think I will feel better with a few things off my needles and I can be more focused on what I'm working on. And then the other things I think I already shared with you, and that is um, the felting with uh, Briggs and Little and then that striped rhythm stripe pattern rhythm or not rhythm generator stripe pattern generator so, yeah it's been good and um boy watch some of the people who are fin doing some amazing finishes right now it's it's amazing right. what uh builds up over time and you kind of forget about it so out of sight out of mind right yeah that and you know all, all. all projects we probably loved at one point or mm -hmm. friends who are looking at projects that they started a few years ago that's just not their jam right now so they're going to frog it and reuse the yarn, which I think is a really good thing to do as well. I think so too. So what Absolutely. is uh, anything new with the old frivolous and frugal? <laughs> oh, you know us. We're just so cutting edge. Um, <laughs> it, it, it pains me to say this, but we learned this the hard way. And those of you who have cats are going to appreciate this. Um, do you know what happens to a cat when they eat a skein of yarn? They have mittens. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that is bad. <laughs> that is bad. Oh. My husband told me that and I said, I'm going to surprise Dawn with yes, it. Yes, you are. She hates puns and plays on words. Okay, but it is funny. Here's what I say, Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass that along. Um, at Frivolous and Frugal, we are still cruising along, waiting until the day we hit 3,000 subscribers <laughs> for our next our next big um celebration. We're not there yet. But if you have someone you think who might enjoy the podcast, pass us along, please. We'd appreciate that. Um, we do have a giveaway with this episode for our YouTube commenters. So the question we're asking you to answer this week in the comments below is, what was the most important thing you learned about knitting in 2022? That can be anything. Um, put that down there. We are, we're kind of excited in a giddy way to hear what you're learning because mm -hmm. Dawn and I and Brianna and even Nikki um, often talk about what you share in the comments and how we can apply it to our knitting. So please, if you're interested in being um, eligible for a giveaway, then that giveaway will be um, announced in episode 95. Still going, our hashtag finish, fix, flip, or frog at Cal, ongoing in Ravelry. Again, as Dawn mentioned, just inspirational to see what people have frogged and what people have finished. So we will have our next drawing for that in episode 96. And we do have one of our spontaneous giveaways for the Burra Cowl, um, hashtag Burra Cowl 2023 today. We have picked randomly two winners and this episode's winners are g cookie and north folk crate north fork crazy so congratulations both of you have won a pattern not to exceed ten dollars and that pattern is of your choice so please message dawn either via ravelry or at the email below and she will hook you up for your pattern so thank you for contributing and joining us in this cow. 
Now, we want to also mention, as Don did earlier, that we're not the only ones using this hashtag. We encourage you to check out the following podcast and local yarn shops who are joining us. We are doing this in conjunction with Three Ply Knits, as we min min mentioned earlier, Knits and Pieces, Around the Table Yarns, Dude Knits, Got Whips, Magpie's Cottage, Pandemic Knitter, and PJ Knits. So those are um, others who are in it. Join them all if you want and mm -hmm. get inspired by the posts that they're sharing. Uh, we had a very nice, I thought, enjoyable virtual knit mm -hmm. together. Oh, uh, was it two weeks ago now? It was during the day. Oh, yeah. And we are still dabbling with how often we want to offer that. And do we have a preference for the evening knit nights or the daytime knit togethers? So if you have a particular opinion and you're vested and you're willing to join us, we have no problem with you ha dropping that in a comment underneath the episode. So as soon as we decide when our next event is, we'll be sure to share that with you. Mini Meetup 2023, as you know, is um, ramping up. There is a link in Ravelry so that you can make reservations at the hotel. We have opened up more rooms for that. You can register to stay there as early as Thursday evening. The actual event, Back to Basics, will start on Friday and will go through the day and into the evening on Saturday. And that will be July 28th and 29th, 2023. We meet at a Hilton Garden Inn in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. And we are just a hop, skip, and a jump away from one of our favorite little locally owned knit shops, and that is Elgin Knitworks. Mm -hmm. So we will be happy to make arrangements to help you get there, to meet Miss Betsy and her mama, Linda, so that you can see that shop and even maybe perhaps um, buy a few things. So if you're interested in joining us, please know that we are back to basics. We are not going to have the fashion show. We're not going to have giveaways, fancy swag bags, parties. <laughs> we are going back to getting to just know one another, sitting around knitting, sharing our experiences and our journeys. So instead of the fashion show, wear what you've knit. That way you can sport it all day, all night, or change out throughout the day. So we encourage you to join us. All of that is on the thread in Ravelry. So please go there for questions. Um, is there anything, Dawn, you wanted to add to that? No, if you go to register at the hotel and you're not getting the discount rate, um, will you let me know? It just means I need to call them and up the numbers. So um, okay. they've been so cordial to work with and easy to work with. Um, yeah, I'm excited. It'll, that'll be here probably before we know it. Yes, it um, certainly will. And I do have an honorable mention. I had a blast from the past three weeks ago. And I wanted to just have a shout out to Miss Joanne. And I'm not going to mention your last name because I don't want to expose you or anything. But Miss <laughs> Joanne and I have been friends for years and life has gotten busy and we hadn't touched bases. But she stumbled upon our podcast and she's been watching us. She is a new knitter uh, or fairly new knitter. So Miss Joanne, as I said on the phone, it was a delight to chat with you. And I'm so thankful you're part of our knitting family. And I look forward to seeing some of your things posted. She is also becoming active in Ravelry. So thank you, ma'am. It was good to see, chat with you, not see you, good to chat with you. And we can't have an episode without what would Nick, oh, yes, please. The woman with the hand in the back. <laughs> thank you. I see that hand. Um, yes. One more honorable mention, Miss Beatrice Rubio sent Penny and I and um, Brianna her new hat pattern that has released, the Hermes hat. It is now written for Aaron Waite. So um, can we can we try to put the link to that in? So thank you. Um, I need yes. to do it. I just, I've picked out two different yarns. So I'll see if maybe I, that can be my hat for the month of March. But um, gosh, it, she just remembered us from when we did her hat initially. 
And uh, thank you so much, Beatrice. That was very gracious. Very gracious of you. And if you'd like to follow her and see other designs from her, it's Samba Knits, S-A-M-B-A. And just delightful. Nice, nice, very peaceful aesthetic. So please feel free to do that and mention that you heard about her on Frivolous and Frugal. Now, this is what our dear sister Nikki would say to us this week. When you have time to do something that you love to do, whether it be knitting, crocheting, or golfing, count your blessings and savor the moment in time. And I am telling you that is so true. Even if it's just five minutes on the needles, be thankful that we had five minutes, right? And in the same vein, Dawn and I are thankful that we've just had the last few minutes with you and we're going to savor that and until we see you again in episode 95, we hope your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.